hey, 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 how you? I am hip hop artist Frankie Boz, and I got the key to the digital art community. And I wear this hat because I'm the host. And today, we're going to bridge the gap between digital art and law. What's the common bond? What's the commonality? What is the connection between digital art and law? So we're going to let you hear from some of the most influential leaders of the digital art community in Washington, D.C., as well as some very influential and prominent lawyers. First, I'm going to take you to a space of digital creation, where Christy Walser, a leader of Project Create, helps run a space where they teach and give resources to the youth in the community of Southeast Washington, D.C. And we're also going to stay on MLK, but take you up the street where we have the hub and the launching grounds of the MLK Parade. Now, the annual Martin Luther King Parade is obviously a parade where we march for equal rights. And Miss Senior Citizen, D.C., Miss Emma Ward, Miss District of Columbia, Senior Citizen, representing for the Senior Citizens, is going to speak with you of the effect and the power of art and how art affects activism and how activism affects art and how art can be used to push equal rights in Washington, D.C. So let's travel to Southeast Washington, D.C. and hear from Christy Walser and Emma Ward. I'm the executive director of Project Create, and you are standing at our brand new uh, digital creation studio. Here we will have classes in digital arts, in music production, um, DJing, uh, photography, videography. We'll have um, classes um, in creative arts and digital arts. This is really represents an expansion of programming that we've been doing here in Anacostia for the last five years. We also have an art studio down the street above Mama's Pizza where we teach visual arts classes and performing arts classes. So this for us is really just a, a growth in, the, in our ability to serve more students in even better ways. So let's continue to uh, create the path that they need for us so that they can continue to move forward. Thank you. Give them a great big hand, please. Okay, my name is Emma P. Ward. I'm Miss Senior DC 2011. I'm one of the many people who represent the seniors here in Washington, D.C. We have more than 104,000 seniors. Miss Phyllis Jordan is our current Miss Senior D.C. 2018. You can do anything in the world in the name of art and entertainment. We are all involved in art and entertainment every hour of our lives, every minute of our hours. When we walk down the street, there's a form of, of art that we use in our own world. No two people walk alike. No people talk alike. You can do anything in the name of art and music. Yep, so you just got to hear from Christy Walser of Digital Creation and Emma P. Ward in Southeast Washington, D.C. Now we're going to transition into our next guest. And now is we're still going to stay in Southeast Washington, D.C. And you're going to hear from another leader and organizer of Digital Creation, none other than hip-hop artist Conscious the MC. Now Conscious the MC is a hip-hop artist from Washington, D.C. who works with these children, specifically teaching them different forms of digital art and using hip-hop to influence and help bring the community together doing art, doing photography, doing videography, 
doing graphic design. And hip hop artist Constance, the MC, is one of the spearheaders, the leaders of digital creation space, working with these youth in different areas of hip hop, photography, videography, helping advance and develop the talent as our next digital creators. And then I'm gonna take you from Southeast all the way to Judiciary Square. We're gonna switch it all the way up and go from the hood all the way to downtown. And you're gonna hear from lawyer James Bubar at the DC Bar. Now I'm gonna give you the inside scoop and bring you inside the DC Bar on a panel about the referendum process. So you're gonna briefly hear and learn about the referendum process and what it is to repeal votes being overturned by the local council. James Bubar is a lawyer and James Bubar is a member of the DC Bar. And he's gonna share with you the common tie between art and policy. So let's go to Southeast again and hear from Conscious, the MC, and our lawyer at the DC Bar, James Booba. With this space, um, it's very, very, very important to me for a few reasons. Growing up in DC, I'm from World War IV, born and raised in Washington, DC. Um, witnessed DC from times that weren't so pleasant um, and to times now, which are getting better, but we still have some issues to deal with. So with this digital creation studio space, my hopes, as I was explaining to a gentleman earlier, is that this could be a hub or a catalyst for individuals, primarily youth, to come here and transform their dreams into something real. A place where you can come and create something that uh, supports and enhances your dream. Because I think your dream is something that should be seen outside of sleep. Because ultimately life is the dream that we see with your eyes open, which can be changed on the spot without hoping. So we manifest after physical rest in this dimension we float in because our spirit's free. Oh, how silly of me to believe there's a such thing as limits or allowing others to edit the book of life, your script and see, to be well versed in this journey. The only pen should recognize should be yours because you are the author of this nonfiction, so we dream. Spread wings, allowing winds to take you to new heights. Cocoon to a better you, butterfly and take flight. You were born a soul in spite of any plight. Allowing the inner light to be ignited, the inner you to be excited, so we dream. To grow, expand, and become diverse. To formulate your plan, understand your worth. To step into greatness, believe and achieve, and to paint the picture your mind conceived, so we dream. We dream. You should dream because it's your last breath. Dream like it's your last breath. Dream because yours isn't like anyone else's. Unleash your dream and let it unlock powers never open because it's your dream that can make this life golden. So we dream, we dream, we dream. And we hope that everybody who enters the space dreams and realizes that your dream can become your reality. So thank you and welcome to this <laughs> Today we are in the private unveiling of Digital Creation Studios by Project Create here in Anacostia, D.C., Southeast D.C. to be exact, on Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue. Um, I am a contributor to the space um, with regards to a bit of construction, but I'm going to be running a uh, creative writing and music production class here with the youth. Um, I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate, not only in giving back, but uh, showing these youth the importance and power of words and just being positive and just um, understanding how being a person of uh, positive nature pushes the uh, culture forward of um, connecting and growing and expanding and building. This space I think is really, really dope um, for a few reasons. One, you know, growing up in DC and the conditions of it, we never had a space like this. Um, I don't even think that it was on DC government's radar back then to even invest money, you know what I'm saying, by giving grants for organizations to apply, you know what I'm saying, to get money and create these spaces where you can benefit and turn their dreams into realities, especially under the umbrella of uh, artistic creation. Um, so my hope here, um, one of the huge things I would like to see 
is that so many youth come and utilize this place and it in turn com combat some of the violence that's going on in this area. I know that's one of the huge agendas that's um, on the plate right now for uh, DC government officials. Unfortunately, the epidemic um, of what's going on and the turmoil between the youth. So I'm hoping that this place is a huge antidote and solution to that in particular. More than any other geographic location, the District of Columbia is associated with the practice of law and the administration of justice. Thousands of lawyers work in our DC and federal court systems. They are new to the law as well as seasoned professionals. They work in government, nonprofit, and business settings in firms of all sizes. The DC Bar has a long tradition of service, both to the public and to its members. The Bar's service to the public is best demonstrated through its award-winning pro bono program, a national model for bringing legal services to those people in our community who can't afford to pay for a lawyer. The program does it by enlisting hundreds and hundreds of volunteer lawyers every year to serve thousands of clients through resource centers located at the courthouse, walk-in clinics in the neighborhoods of Washington, and by pairing lawyers with nonprofit organizations and small businesses to provide advice and counsel. Absolute integrity is fundamental to the ethical practice of law. In the District of Columbia, all lawyers are expected to adhere to the DC Code of Professional Conduct, which sets out the minimum standards for ethical practice. The DC Bar offers a number of programs to help lawyers meet those ethical requirements. The first of which is a legal ethics staff with the DC Bar that provides advice and guidance on a day-to-day -day basis for those questions that come up just in your ordinary matters. For more complicated issues or issues that require advisory opinions interpreting the ethical rules, we have a legal ethics committee staffed by volunteers of the DC Bar. Then for all of our members, we offer continuing legal education through our CLE program, which is outstanding and offers programs that are recognized by every jurisdiction in the country. One of the core values of the District of Columbia Bar is leadership. And that's because leaders are not just born, they can be made if they're given the proper tools and the proper opportunities to build those skills. We understand that for the profession and the community to prosper, we have to have leaders who understand law and know how to use that, but know how to work with people to make things happen. I encourage you to explore our website where you can find detailed information about our diverse portfolio of program offerings, all of which are designed to reinforce our steadfast commitment to service, integrity, and leadership. Welcome to the DC Bar. Back in um, the early 70s, Congress enacted the Home Rule Act, uh, taking the local governance of the District of Columbia away from uh, federally appointed commissioners and establishing a mayor and a district council to deal with local legislative matters and executive matters. Um, the Home Rule Charter did not contain any provisions about initiatives or referendum. Um, it did contain a provision whereby um, the district government could propose amendments to the Home Rule Charter. And when the first council took office, um, on, on their agenda was the idea that there should be a provision for initiatives and referenda as, as a number of states around the country have, mostly Western states, because initiatives and referenda were a, um, a progressive era innovation. Um, the, the, uh, Eastern Seaboard states, um, I, I'm not sure if any of them have statewide initiative and referendum provisions. Maryland and Virginia don't, New York doesn't. I think most of the Eastern states don't. Florida, I think, does, which was a latecomer and not an original colony. Um, in any event, there was a, there was a popular um, um, movement uh, to, to amend the charter this way, and the council drafted proposed charter amendments, which, according to the procedure of the Home Rule Act, were submitted to the voters in a referendum for their approval, and they approved it. 
Um, and so our process didn't come about the way uh, initiatives and referenda exist in many of the states where they are part of the state constitution, um, part of the original structure of the state government, and um, in some senses at least on an equal footing with the legislative power uh, that the constitution gives to the legislature. Here the city council developed the procedure and, and, um, and put some restrictions on it. The Home Rule Charter itself has some restrictions on the legislative power of the District of Columbia government. For example, uh, the, the council and the mayor can't enact legislation um, that applies outside the District of Columbia, and that's been interpreted to mean that we can't have a commuter tax the way other states do. People who live in Maryland and Virginia and work in D.C., their income is not taxed by the District of Columbia, whereas if you live in New Jersey or Connecticut and work in New York, you pay income tax to New York State. Um, the council also can't alter the jurisdiction of the court system here. So what's in the federal courts remains there, what's in the D.C. Superior Court remains there, and the council can't do anything about that. Hi, I'm James Bubar, and I was asked um, how artists can help with uh, the initiative process, home rule, getting statehood for the district residents of the District of Columbia. I think artists play a tremendous role in all of that. Because one thing we have to explain to the American people is how we, residents of the District of Columbia, are treated differently. We're not being treated equal to residents of the other of the other states. And artists can help express how that feels not to be chart treated equal and how we can express um, the fact that we uh, need to be treated equal as other residents and have statehood. Statehood will allow us to play a more active role in our democracy, unfeathered by congressional and federal oversight. It will distinguish between federal Washington and local D.C. geographically so that we, D.C. citizens, can gain a clearer understanding of the distinction between government and politics. And hopefully, we will make it more of a reality for all Americans. Yep, so you just shared with hip hop artist Conscious the MC, speaking with you about how digital art and hip hop has a positive effect on the youth in Southeast War 8. Then we're going to transition from MLK, from Toxic, to Judiciary Square as we return to the referendum process. And you're going to hear from lawyer Ann Wilcox. Now, Ann Wilcox is a lawyer who represents D.C. statehood, and Ann Wilcox coincides with the art community. She collaborates and she respects the art community, and she's going to talk to you about how art and law go together. So let's hear from digital artist, Toxic, and lawyer, Ann Wilcox. It's great to have you. I understand you've been doing this since you were 12 years old. Yes, I've been marching in the parade since I was 12 years old. That makes old. you what, 20? I'm 22. 22, 22, that's, that's pretty amazing. And, and where do you play? Do you play at the, at the reviewing stand? Uh, yes, I'm actually playing at the reviewing stand last year. Uh -huh. I was actually in the parade on one of the flatbeds. Uh -huh. So, so, so you got a flatbed, you're playing music, the music is blaring, it's a great time. It's a beautiful time. It's a beautiful time, yeah. A, a lot of people come. What has changed uh, in your mind since you've been doing this? You've been, you were a kid when you started, you're an adult right now, you, you've been seeing this, uh, the changing in the community as well as the changing in the way the parade is done. What, what, uh, what have you seen? What kind of things have you seen change? The kind of things I have seen change within the community and within the parade is the growth of the parade, actually. Uh, Since I was 12, it was just nothing but um, African-American people. And now I'm starting to see more diversity, too. And mm. that's what really brings me out. And that's what really makes this day special. 
because it still it is still living Martin Luther King's dream of little boys and little girls still playing together. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing that has changed is the growth and the diversity of this parade. I am Toxic. I am a producer, sound engineer, and marketing ambassador to the audio industry. Like it's it's hard to for some kids in the DMV to get a job. Yes, you have a DMV program for these kids, but at the same time, it's still hard for them because others don't have the resources like a laptop or a computer to get on. And yes, you may have the library, but then some of them still do not have the means to get to that library. So start setting up more programs that's more beneficial, that caters to the children other than what we're just thinking that might cater to them. We need to start asking our children, we need to start asking our youth, what do they want more out of life for themselves? And part of the, the Home Rule Charter amendments uh, said that the council shall pass legislation implementing the new initiative and referendum procedure uh, once, it, once it's established. And the council imposed um, at least another which is that the, that the Board of Elections should reject a proposed initiative that would uh, authorize or have the effect of authorizing discrimination prohibited by the Human Rights Act. Um, and that's also been a subject of litigation in, in several cases. Our process from its birth has been more limited than it is in other places. And procedurally, there are also a number of obstacles, and I'm sure you'll hear more about that later in the program. In, in, in at least some other places, uh, people decide they want to have an initiative, they draw up a petition, and they can go out and circulate it to get the necessary signatures. In D.C., it has to be submitted to the Board of Elections in advance. The Board of Elections decides if it's a proper subject of initiative. The Board of Elections decides whether the short title that voters will see on the ballot is a fair and neutral title for the initiative. Um, they decide whether the language is in proper legislative form and they have an active role in making sure that it complies in all those ways. And then, if you're not happy with what the Board of Election does, you can go to court. You can go to Superior Court and litigate about it. Um, and if you're not happy with the Superior Court's decision, you can take an appeal to the Court of Appeals. And all of that happens, or can happen, and has happened, before you can take your petition and go get signatures. You can't circulate petitions until the Board of Elections actually hands them to you having approved the exact format of the petition. And so many initiatives have foundered uh, before they ever collect a single signature, because somewhere along the line, the Board of Elections, the Superior Court, the Court of Appeals, um, uh, either decides it's not proper or uses up so much time in that process, despite moving pretty quickly, um, that there's no time left to get enough signatures before the next election. Hello, I'm Ann Wilcox. I'm a member of the DC Bar and we're meeting up here today at the DC Bar headquarters to talk about the initiative and referendum process in DC, how that works under home rule, how it worked particularly in this last Initiative 77 process, and what reforms might be made. I think we had a really good discussion about how it's evolved, what the good and bad aspects of initiatives are. We had the participation of Chairman Mendelson from the Council, which was very helpful. And I think some reforms need to be made, particularly in, in terms of the times periods that are allowed, uh, whether the initiatives go on a general election or and, and how it should be how public education needs to work into this. And I'll just mention as a lawyer, I've often worked with demonstrators who do civil disobedience around various issues. So that's always something that's fed into the statehood debate or into any of the other local issues. Also um, art and uh, is a big part of public education. Uh, you can have posters that are put around the city on, you know, on electrical boxes or bus stops. So there's colorful poster art. You can have concerts, uh, street concerts, for example, like a, just a street corner uh, concert to raise public awareness around an issue. And actually, the Initiative 77 process to try to first get it through and then to uh, overturn the council when the council rolled back Initiative 77, that did involve a lot of street heat. Uh, the people went out and got collected signatures. They collected thousands of signatures in just a week. And it was a major uh, public education effort. And they did get their signatures, but because of some notice um, technicalities, they weren't able to do the referendum, which would have um, put Initiative 77, you know, 
into law. So unfortunately, that's not going to happen this time, but maybe in the future we'll correct some of those um, issues and uh, get more initiatives on the ballot. Statehood will allow us to play a more active role in our democracy, unfeathered by congressional and federal oversight. It will distinguish between federal Washington and local D.C. geographically so that we, D.C. citizens, can gain a clearer understanding of the distinction between government and politics. And hopefully, we will make it more of a reality for all Americans. Now it's time to take you to the bar. Let's go. Frankie, bars, bars, the show. Frankie, bars, got bars, it's the Frankie Bars Show. Got the keys to the DC bar, it's legal now. Got sativa in my reefer jar. Chillin' with some lawyers in a different car. After the panel interviewing Mr. Boobar. All these bars, all these bars, it's so many bars. Crowd of people in the street and it's really large. At Judiciary Square, back from Peachtree. Fastin' for a month, this is week three. Flow toxic like the rapper grab the tea tree. All statehood and Harlem be free. Know some lawyers gotta use a pen to up my profits. Know with digital creation space to up my conscience. That's an MC on the MIC with Miss District of Columbia. That's senior C. C for citizen, you ain't gotta see ID with his hat, cause I got it if you need a key. <laughs> 